and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. I am Steve Leahy. Okay, I get this one a lot, so I thought I'd kind of throw a quick video up on this, and that is dealing with tip dry, the dreaded tip dry. So with airbrushing, what happens is the paint will dry on the very end of the needle of the airbrush, and that will kind of clog things up and stop the airbrush from working. Different paints do it differently, depending on the amount of pigment in it, the way the binder is, things like that. But basically it's universal. There's no way to really stop it entirely. If anyone tells you that they don't get tip dry, they are lying because they are saying that their paint never dries. So some paints don't do it as much as other paints and some airbrushes don't do it as much as other airbrushes, but it's really universal across this tool. So there are ways that you can minimize it though, and I'm gonna show you the most important way to do that right now. And it's very simple, but it makes a huge difference. Okay, so with an airbrush, usually your airbrushes are all double action now, which means you push down for air and then pull back for paint. So the farther back you pull, the more paint you get. So the number one thing to do, if you're just starting or need to relearn this, then do it, but the air always has to be on as you're as you're spraying so get in the habit of getting the air going by itself before you start and then as soon as you're done spraying for instance if you're doing whatever you're doing you're painting your stuff as soon as you're done with whatever you're painting that line or that dot or that fade you leave the air on completely with the paint off before you let go of the air it's super important a lot of artists will just kind of get the air going, painting, and then just let go of the trigger. When you do that, it leaves wet paint on the end of the needle and that paint dries. That's what tip dry is. So the trick is, is by leaving the air on, so you're painting and then stopping and then leaving the air for a second. What you're doing is you're cleaning off any residual paint that's on there. Now that's the first thing. The second thing is you do have to maintain the needle a lot. So what I've done is I've taken the needle guard or needle cap off of this airbrush, which is what I do on most brushes. So that way I can use my fingernails and just gently kind of clean off any dried paint. And that, that will help things run really smooth as well. So that's it, that's the trick. So keep that air going as much as you can, almost to the point of being obnoxious at the beginning. Like you finish painting, and then let it go for a little bit and then let it go until you get in that habit of really making sure that the air is on by itself at the end of your strokes. <clears throat> you do that, that's the number one thing you can do to minimize tip dry on these brushes. There are some other things, you know, but, um, but by far keeping the air on all the time, that is the number one thing that will help you out. All right, so I hope this quick one helped. It is super important, but also super easy. So you can start incorporating that right into your airbrushing. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. And that bell icon will give you updates on new videos that we post here. As always, your support is huge, whether it's by super thanks for the videos that you liked, becoming a member here or on Patreon. And of course, the freeway works really, really well. Just click the like button and drop me a comment. All right, for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, I'll catch you guys next week.